Greetings, my fellow Tarnished. This is going to be another match against my friend Lorenzo playing Diaboromon. And you see I rolled a 12 there. I'm going to go first. And Diaboromon, this is actually a deck that I didn't update since, like, BT7, maybe? I don't know. This deck has not been updated in a while, and I'm just like, you know what? I haven't played it in a while. Let's see how it goes. Turn 1. Pass. That's exactly where you want to be when you turn one. I don't even put out a baby. I just look at my hand and I'm like, here's three memory. Let's see what you can do. Uh, here, though, I do go up into that uh, nice looking Ketamon just laying on the beach looking fancy. Go up into the Kurisarimon that lets you play the Arata for free, but unfortunately it is in raising, so you don't actually get that effect. I'm thinking about what to do next and. I just pass instead of play out another Kurisarimon or something like that. The Analog Boy does get me the Infirmon that I am going to need. And uh, it uh, doesn't die, so he kills it himself. Gets the draw 3, trash 2, draw 2, trash 1, draw 1, trash 1, draw 0, trash 5. All that fancy jibber-jabber that purple decks usually do when they're on the Eismon package. Which, uh, you know, that does do a lot of work for him, so... He's feeling really nice right now. I basically passed him two free turns. He took out one of my security. He has set up his graveyard almost in full. And the uh, next question is, how the hell am I going to deal with this? He's going to pass the turn back to me, which is going to be a growing trend here. I go up into the Infirmon. And with this, I'm going to go up into the... Uh, I'm, you can see I'm thinking the Diaboromon that spits out a token or the Diaboromon that has security attack. I spit out the token because... You know, he's going to try to kill the stack, and, you know, if he kills the stack, that leaves the token on board. You saw I have the uh, Diaboromon with security, the promo Diaboromon in there, so if that one little token stays, even if it doesn't do anything, it does give me an extra security attack later. So, I do build up the Koromon. He does take out the stack with that fly bullet, which means I don't get one extra check, but, uh, you know, that token stays on the board and he's not exactly in the mood to kill that so I play out the black tie which is uh an edit that I made to this deck and an errata too so the black tie was actually in there to get my infirmon plus 1000 dp so they don't get bounced by imperial dramon plays by pile dramon because it puts it right above the threshold so it doesn't get put to the bottom of the deck. You can see he's swinging into security, hits two erratas, and now this is very scary. So he definitely doesn't want to give me a lot of secure, of a lot of memory here. And you can see he's doing his shenanigans again with the Eismon. But there is going to be hell to pay if he does give me some more memory than he wants to give me. Because three erratas. And, you know, I do have unidentified in the grave. That's three extra memory, even if he does only give me one, even though I'm going to get set to three anyway. So that's minimum six memory I'm going to have. Wondering what he's going to do next. I mean, not too much he can do, because, again, I am just going to get set. He doesn't have his removal for my tamers just yet. So, you know, I'm looking at his hand. Could play out the mat just to have a setter for himself, but he does play out the Labramon to try to make this as you know easy for himself as he can but you can you're gonna see next turn it is gonna be explosive all of those erratas in security that is plus three memory for an unidentified in the grave go up to six here ketamon move up you see i have a kurisarimon i have a final zubagon punch in my hand too which was another spicy tech i'm actually gonna warp into the infernamon i'm gonna completely skip the uh the thing the uh, Kurisarimon. The red uh, option actually pops the lowest the lowest uh, call, uh, DP on the board. So with that, I put out the Diaboromon and three tokens. They all have blocker. So you, again, I miss out on that Kurisarimon, but I really needed that uh, memory to go up into the uh, Infirmon because that would have been five memory, I would have been left with one. I wanted to try to choke him as best as I could. But missing out on something like that, now he's gonna bang, bang, bang all of my tokens because he's gonna use the uh, red level seven, or red seven cost option. 
which again, I go up to seven memory. I still have a big blocker on the board that he can't really get around. There's the toy Agumon that I mentioned in the last video. It's here in my Diaboromon deck because I like to swing in with a big blocker then have it reboot, which is a, a callback to one of my very first decks, which was Craniumon because I bought the uh, black starter deck and then I added Craniumon and Black War Greymon with blocker reboot to it. So that, that was a fun time. That is my baby deck. And then I eventually evolved into, uh, you know, whatever the hell I'm playing today. Here I'm deciding, do I want to play something out or do I want to, you know, digivolve out? Uh, it's actually my opponent, Lorenzo, that says, you know, just play an Infirmon and then digivolve into another Diaboromon because I have the memory to do that. I have seven memory. And I'm thinking, do I play out a Kudisati and then digivolve up? But nope, I just go for the Infirmon and right into another blocker Diaboromon, make three tokens, and that is five blockers on the board right now. And, well, you're gonna see he's building up. Look at all of those attackers he has. He's gonna swing into security. I'm gonna block it, which is gonna get him exactly what he wants. He's gonna draw one, trash one, draw two, trash two, draw three, trash three, draw four, trash four. And, you know, that's just the power of the purple deck with the Eismon package, but you can also see the power of having two huge blockers and then three little shit blockers that are just going to do nothing but get in the way. And that's exactly what this deck is kind of designed to do. It's designed to just get in the way and then push up with your promo Diaboromon and swing for 20 checks. Plays out another Bealstarmon, clears out all the tokens again, but I mean, he probably would have had a better time trying to clear out the big guys because those just... Those are the ones I give blocker. Here I go up into the Kurisadimon, and that's the one that gives me memory back if I digivolve into the, uh, or play out more Diaboromon tokens. And that's exactly what's happening here. Play out three Diaboromons, get three memory back, and you see I am going to swing for three, four, five, six, seven checks basically on this one Diaboromon. So, one, two, three, and then swing for game. <laughs> so that is the power of the Diaboromon deck and uh, whether or not those big blockers can go up against something like the OTKs or like uh, Armor Rush, you know, I've yet to see because this is something that I just decided to whip out because I haven't played it in a while and it's actually, you know, it was a lot of fun, you know, it's one of my first decks that I made, Diaboromon, one of my first true loves and you know, it was, it felt really good to bring it at, back out. And, uh, you know, I have since updated it. I might probably try to upload more Diaboromon videos. I might make that my main deck again because it is a fun deck. You see, I have Breath of the Gods, Final Zubagon Punch, which I actually switched out the Zubagon Punch for Congo to, you know, lean more into the complete stall into win deck, which, uh, when I think of the other matchups like Black War Greymon, like Security Control, kind of difficult unless I do run something like a hero and then a delicate plan because sure he can chaos de de degrade my uh you know my big boy my uh security plus 20 Diaboromon but then I have like 20 more tokens with rush and even if they don't have rush they still have I still have a million more tokens but here he's just plowing through my security three eyes mons on the board I have two blockers down and uh, that's something I consistently forget to do, too, is use my goddamn blockers. But, uh, you see, I still do have a very powerful board. I do have the reboot underneath that Diaboromon right there. And, of course, the, uh, the token is a blocker as well. Swing in, that's an analog. Boy! He gets the Labramon. Finds only one of those options. And then I play out a Kudisadimon, because that's the one that gives all my tokens rush. Swings in, I do block. He's going to get his draw 20, trash a million. He's going to swing it for security again. It dies. And this is where I'm like, all right, do I go down to zero security and maybe leave him with something on the board? Or do I, you know, just sacrifice my token? So, you know, the decision comes through. I think I sacrifice my token here. See, I'm rearranging my pieces. Yeah, I sack the token. It actually lives because uh, there are no buffs on the tokens right now, but he is gonna call his own Eismon trash and draw because, you know, Graceful Charity was banned in Yu-Gi-Oh for a reason, you know? And it's at four here in Digimon. 
<laughs> go up into the Infirmon. I still have that one Arata on board. I swing into security. There's an Omnimon's Warp D, which is not exactly what I wanted to see pop out of security, but I go up into another Blocker Diaboromon, make another token, and well, now I have something to get in the way of that Zwart D, which is pretty sweet. And again, this is the power of this Diaboromon build, where it's just full stall, full like, just try to get past me, and then I'll eventually win the game, because I'm chipping in every turn, Blocker Reboot, Blocker Reboot, and I'm just getting in the way every time. Look at all these blockers. But, of course, against, you know, more mass removal type things, I'm, again, I'm trying to rack my brain for these matchups. You know, War Greymon X, where it just goes over it, or if I don't build up fast enough, those one-shot decks just go right through it. You know, like, Omnimon... I guess Omnimon does just get stopped by a blocker, except he de-digivolves, and then uh, he uses his uh, red spell again to clear out both of my blockers because it's the lowest dp which they were both at the same dp wouldn't you know so now he has two big bat boys out i just play out the diaboromon with blocker because that's really all i can do bang bang and he wins this game too with that omnimon x antibody so you know i do want to test out the diaboromon more i want to see what its strengths and weaknesses possibly would be uh there is really nothing to guard against the digivolution in the game like uh you know i do have breath of the gods but that prevents bouncing and that prevents uh dp re uh not dp reduction i think but i do also want to get the uh I don't have any of the Kurisarimons with decoy, so I'm planning on getting those, replacing the classic Kurisarimons, because before, it was more about getting the higher DP so you can swing over things in security like Reaper, like an Omnimon, or like Imperialmon Paladin mode, or something like that, where you needed to be above 15k, but now it's more or less trying to survive all of the options. Because, again, you have security control, which is just nothing but control options. You have Alpha Mon, which de-digivolves you, and he's even at 16k himself in security. I've seen uh, some D-Brigade decks running around with Cheeky Cheeky Mons that de-digivolve you. So, uh, you know, just a lot of really annoying things. And even uh, some War Grey X decks do tech in the classic War Grey Mon with Blitz. Because it deletes a blocker on Digi Evolution and then it blitzes in, which is that's a tech I run, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Uh, you see what's going on here? Taking out some of my security takes out my Ketamon with a fly bullet. I go up into the Infirmon, and then I'm gonna go up into the Blocker Diaboromon. I can't poop out a token because I don't have any Aratas, and that is one of the main weaknesses of this deck is if you can't make tokens then you're very, very slow because the tokens slow the board down or they speed it up depending on which Diaboromon you have. So you see I did evolve up into that uh, Kurisarimon that lets me play an errata for free, but I don't have an errata. So I'm just going to swing, swing. Uh, he brings back the Gabumon that just came out of security. And then I play out another Kurisarimon. Kind of looks like I'm trying to rush him down, which that is something these tokens can do as well is they can rush down your opponent. There's a Breath of the Gods. He can't attack anymore. Not like he was gonna attack anyway. He only had one Gabumon on board, and I really wish it kind of died. Plays out the Beelstarmon for a lot, and he's gonna use that to bang, bang, bang. Clears out a couple of things on the board, but my token stays. It's only at 3k DP, let's be real. Goes for the Analog Boy, which I actually took out of the deck. I'm Again, I'm gonna be testing this a lot. Uh, find the Arata, finally, find an Infirmon. So now you're gonna see, I think I do have the other Kurisarimon play the Arata for free, and then go up into, well, I'm gonna swing first just to get that value. He gets the value of the analog, boy! And from that, he gets exactly what he wants, another Beelstarmon. And, you know, if I go up, if I go up into the Infirmon, he's just gonna pop it, so I don't even play it out. I just, pass the turn and I know he's going to play something to just delete my Kurisarimon anyway. And that's situations I've been in before where I run out of level fives because they're either in security or they're at the bottom of the deck or I just, you know, did evolve up into a level five and they're gone. And you only run like eight or nine in your deck, which you do see. I mean, you need to see them in order to get to where you're going. I play out another analog boy for a search. 
Unfortunately, there goes an errata, but, you know, deciding do I want the Infirmon or do I want the Ketamon? Do I want to build for the future in one way with the rookie, which I know I'm going to see another rookie, or do I want this Infirmon now? And you can see me deliberating because I do have an Infirmon, but I do opt for the rookie. Not really any way to get recursion. You can see I switch out my uh, non box topper errata for the box topper errata because it's just a prettier card. Play out the Ketamon, and then I play. I warp into the Infirmon. I'm setting up for a big play next turn because I want to try to get out a lot of tokens. So he swings into security with Eismon. It has jamming. If he removes this Infirmon, then that's okay. And that's kind of the threat because I can build up into the Infirmon in raising, and that's exactly what he does. He removes my Infirmon there, and this is where, again, it's going to get kind of scary for him because I could push up and swing for game next turn if I have the right Diaboromon in my hand. He knows I have an Infirmon in my hand, and if it is the security Diaboromon, I swing in with that, and then I swing in with the token because it's going to get Rush. So let's see what happens here. Swing into the or Digivolve up into the Infirmon. I have the Arata on board, can make a token. There's the uh, Diabormon that actually makes a second token, but they both have Rush. So I swing with one token, swing with another token, and then swing for game. So the decision there was more or less, do I want to go a 1-1-1 one, 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 or do I want to risk swinging in with my one stat, my one check, and then having it be checked by you know a fly bullet and it doesn't get its second check, which at the same time, he could just delete one of the other tokens with that fly bullet or whatever removal, but I thought it would be safest to swing one of the tokens, and then even if he did have removal, he deletes one of the other Digimon, swing with another token, he is left at zero security, and then I can push up with a, a baby next turn, you know? So, a very close game right there as we move into this fourth game. I'm playing a little bit of a best of five here because, you know, we just had a lot of time and this is a casual game. It's just to kind of showcase the decks here. There's the Kurisarimon that gets me memory. There's the black tie that is a setter. I did replace that black that uh, black tie with the black Izzy again because, you know, being able to rearrange those top three and maybe get one memory back can be powerful sometimes. Plus, uh, you don't really need that plus 1000 on the defense anymore because it's either... Like, most of the things swinging now are, like, 12, I mean, like, 15k DP anyway. So, like, going from 11k blocker to 12k blocker, that doesn't really matter much. Swings in with that Gobblemon because he's trying to go wide. He does that Ginkakumon promote out. He is going to swing in with that. I will block it. And then he's going to swing in with the other Gobblemon. It dies. So, he does get two checks off of my board. Goes into the nail bone, bringing back two of his Digimon again. I have four memory to work with here. And, well, this is kind of scary because I only do have one blocker. It can be removed at any moment's notice by a Beelstorm on with a Fly Bullet or whatever dumb bullshit he might be able to pull out. But you can see I'm building up another fat stack. And if I can find a way to make some tokens, I have two Kurisarimon that are going to get me memory back. So if it's one token being played, I get two memory. If I can make two tokens, that's four memory. That's a lot of memory coming back my way. And that's why we play that Kurisarimon, because it extends your turn. Passes it back to me. You see, I do play out the Diabormon with a token. I get two memory back right there just for the one token. Unfortunately, it doesn't have rush because, you know, when choosing your Kurisarimon, it has to be one or the other, you know? Or once I get the decoy, I'm going to add the decoy in as well. So I do go into the uh, Ultimate Flare to D-Digivolve, or not Ultimate Flare, the uh, Catastrophe Cannon. I get the memory back again because of the uh, token being made. And then I just pass the turn after making a check that Diaboromon has reboot. It has blocker as well because all Diaboromon get blocker, which uh, is a very powerful tool when you have that classic Diaboromon out. So just waiting to see what his next move is going to be. He's counting up everything in his security. He plays out the Avenge Kidmon and returns all options to the bottom, which is kind of counterintuitive in a Bealstarmon deck. But it is another way to, you know, extend the game and keep playing it out. Except uh, this time he actually had to play it early. He does pop one of my tokens on the way. I'm reading the card because that's not something I really see that often. And, well, I think it is uh, still a very dangerous spot for him to be in. I'm building up in security, or in my uh, raising. I play out another uh, Ketamon that helps me search. Still can't find an errata. 
And I do look at my hand, I'm looking like, do I want this Kuti Sadimon that lets me play an errata for free just in case I do find it? Like I rip it off the top of the deck, swing into security, just one more check, finds the uh, analog boy, unluckily enough, making room, warping into the Infirmon, and now that puts even more pressure on the board because there's four things on the board. There's soon to be like, five or six, depending on if I do find this errata or if it's insecurity. I'm gonna block the Ginkaku promote. I am gonna block the Avenge Kidmon with a token because I don't wanna lose a Diaboromon. He's gonna Digivolve up into Aizmon. I'm gonna let it through and the Zubagon Punch goes into my hand here. I'm gonna block the Labramon. He only gets to draw one trash one. And he still has some pressure on the board, but again, I do have the Infirmon down and ready to Digivolve. He doesn't have any way to get that Bealstorm on out for super cheap unless he wants to give me 10 memory right now. So this is a bad position for the Bealstorm on player who's just going to play out that uh, red option to delete my Infirmon because that is scary. But now I'm pushing up with a Ketamon. I finally do find the Arata, play it for free off the Digi Evolution. I go up into the Infirmon and here I am going to... Digivolve up into the promo Diaboromon, make an errata, get two memory back because I make two, I make one token on two returns, swing for 20 checks again, and that is the game. So, as you can see, Diaboromon, even though Bealstormon isn't played too much in the meta right now, it's still a good deck. It's a fun deck. You're definitely going to see it at your local level. And Diaboromon has all but fallen out of the meta. And I feel like it's something that still could be feared you know diaboromon is a very fun deck so the next time we come back it's actually going to be another grand drachmon video where uh he is playing uh his imperial dramon and you're going to see why uh that is part of the reason why i stopped playing imperial dramon or uh grand drachmon because imperial dramon is just big and scary so that is going to be it for me for this video and yeah i will catch you cats later